The a7 III is still one of the most popular hybrid cameras out today. But what's surprising is that this camera has actually been out for a few years now and newer and better cameras have come out since. So why is the a7 III still so popular with both professionals and casual shooters? This camera does have a unique combination of design, specs, and price that's pretty hard to find. So naturally, I got my hands on an a7 III to see what the hype is all about and who exactly this camera is right for. Also, I'll leave links down below for the a7 III and the best pricing for it. One of the biggest selling points of the a7 III has to be the body and design. The a7 III has a compact yet robust professional style camera body that's also weather sealed. And everything about this camera from inside and outside is really made for speed and ease of use. For example, it has four different custom buttons that can be programmed to just about anything from picture profiles to different autofocus modes. So pretty much any way you like to use your camera, you can set it up just how you like it. And there's also two separate custom profiles on the mode dial so you can set this up for different shooting scenarios for example i like to set my camera up for portraits and sports and i can switch between the two with just a simple click of the mode dial and one thing that photographers are going to love is that it also has a joystick on the back specifically for controlling your autofocus points this way if you're ever shooting with this camera up to your eye you can use the joystick while it's up to your eye to quickly switch between different autofocus points and keep your subject in focus. Because it is a bit older, the screen on the back is only a tilt screen where most modern cameras now have a side articulating screen so you can see yourself while recording. Now this isn't ideal for video shooters specifically because you definitely wanna have the screen on the side, but there's actually a version of the a7 III that I'll talk about later that does have a side articulating screen on it and also has some very specific design choices that are better for video shooters. But older camera or not, this still has the Sony NPF-Z style batteries which last quite a while and are also the same batteries you see in all of the other Sony Pro camera models. And the a7 III can also be charged via the USB-C charger, which is so clutch, especially when you lose your charger. Now, the real reason the a7 III is such a popular camera with both photographers and video shooters is that it also has a 24 megapixel full frame sensor. And it's also back illuminated, which means the a7 III is shockingly good in low light. And despite being an older sensor, the quality of the sensor absolutely stands toe to toe with even newer 24 megapixel full frame sensors. And personally, I also find that most photographers and video shooters also prefer a full frame sensor, mainly because it gives you a wider field of view, which helps your shots feel more scenic or epic. And also if you're shooting portraits, you can also get a more intimate feel to your portraits by allowing your subjects to be closer to the camera using the right lens. The only issue I can see someone having with the a7 III is that they might feel like 24 megapixels isn't enough resolution, which I kind of get when you have 33 megapixel, 45 megapixel cameras out there, but I do believe that 24 megapixels is more than enough, especially for portraits and landscape. And a lot of the cameras with 33 megapixel sensors and 45 megapixel sensors also cost way more than the a7 III. Now, when it comes to actually shooting photos, the a7 III shoots up to 10 frames per second with the ability to also shoot 87 photos in RAW mode and 117 photos in JPEG mode without this camera needing a break. This is really useful for sports photography, wildlife photography, or anything where you need to hold down the shutter and spray and pray. And if you're gonna be shooting high-speed photos, you have to make sure your autofocus can keep up. And the a7 III does have an older autofocusing system, but Sony has always done a tremendous job with their autofocusing system. And the a7 III, while it doesn't have the newest features like subject tracking or subject auto detect, the a7 III does a really solid job keeping everything in focus, tracking with subjects, even the moving ones. And especially with portraits, I find it never ever lets me down. It always focuses on the eye. It never makes the mistake of focusing to the nose or the wrong parts of the face. The autofocus in this camera, while it's not as good as newer cameras, I would still give a solid 8 out of 10. And looking at the overall photo quality, specifically in RAW mode from the a7 III, the photos are crisp with tons of detail. And some of my favorite images that I've ever shot were actually made on this sensor. There's a lot of room to both push your light and color values. And the sensor is also really good in low light. So even if you need to raise your ISO and exposure, you really won't get a ton of noise or artifacting in your images. But when it comes to video in this camera, it's a whole different story. And there's a few things I love about it and the few things that are really annoying. Let's talk about it. The a7 III shoots 4K at 24 and 30 frames per second, and it also does full HD at 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second for two times and five times slow motion. Sadly, there is no 4K at 60 frames per second in this camera, which I know is a recording mode that a lot of video shooters want now, 
but once again, it's an older camera. Now, I don't think it makes sense to compare the a7 III to other cameras, which obviously have more resolution, which obviously have more data rates. What I really care about is the quality and look of this camera. And if you look online, there is a ton of amazing cinematic footage that was shot with the a7 III, if you know what you're doing, because this camera has a ton of horsepower in it that you can utilize to create some stunning pieces. But this is only if you know what you're doing. If you're new, this camera actually has quite a steep learning curve. This camera does have the older Sony color science back in the day when people knew for a fact that Sony did not have good colors. So when it comes to editing the colors and getting the right look out of this camera, it can be a little bit tricky and it definitely has a little bit of learning. And the a7 III also only shoots in 8-bit color, where most modern cameras now shoot in 10-bit color. But the a7 III does have S-Log and Cinema Profiles 1 through 4, so you do have a lot of options for the color profile that you want to use for your type of shooting. And if you're new to cameras, I personally recommend Cinema 1 or Cinema 4, and it gives you the softest and the easiest colors to manipulate, but S-Log is where the magic's at. And a really helpful tool from Sony is that you can also go on their website and download their creative LUTs created by other Sony ambassadors that give you a really easy and cinematic look with this camera. But if you're a casual shooter that's not trying to make cinematic stuff, I'm just gonna be honest with you. You might hate the colors in this camera. There's obviously video samples up on screen so you can kind of judge for yourself if you like the colors or not. But if you want colors, that just look good straight out of the camera. There is a camera that I'm gonna talk about later in this video that always has good colors and it's also much more user friendly. Now, it's probably not going to come as a surprise when I say the a7 III also has really good video autofocus, but there's a few things you should know about it. The autofocus does a pretty good job with face and subject tracking, but it's probably not quite as good as the newer Sony cameras, so you'll definitely notice that it's not quite as sticky and anytime it can't quite recognize what it's seeing, the autofocus definitely messes up and it goes way out and then way in. Where newer cameras you'll find that it misses for a second and then snaps right back and it's not very noticeable. But on an older camera like this, when the autofocus messes up, it really messes up and you really notice it. And one thing that I was really surprised to see in the a7 III is that it also has five axis video stabilization. So you get really smooth handheld footage with this camera. So why is the a7 III so popular and is it actually worth it considering the fact that there are newer and obviously better cameras that have come out since? Well, the answer is kind of complicated. So let's talk about it from the perspective of the different kinds of shooters that would be using this camera and what they will like about this camera and what they might be missing. The a7 III is really great for a specific type of shooter. If you want a compact camera with a super solid body and you want a pro type body with all these custom buttons, the custom mode dials with the joystick for autofocus, plus a 24 megapixel sensor, 10 frames per second. If you're that kind of photographer that just wants a real photography camera and you don't want to break the bank, the a7 III is a very, very good choice. And the autofocus in the a7 III is going to be perfectly fine, if not stellar, for 80% of photographers out there. But if you're someone that shoots a lot of high speed action like sports or wildlife, and you need that autofocus to really be able to keep up with action, you may wanna look at a slightly newer camera that I'll talk about in just a second that does have newer autofocus to keep up with those demands. Now, if you're a video shooter, the a7 III is phenomenal. You can probably see on screen right now, there's a ton of people that have shot amazing work with this camera. But if you don't have to get the a7 III, I would actually recommend picking up the a7C simply because it has a side articulating screen and it does have a flat top, which is more user-friendly for video shooters. But at the same time, you could easily add a camera monitor to this so you don't need a side articulating screen and you can still rig this camera out to be a proper video camera. Now, the only newer and better camera that's come out that I still feel like competes with the value of the a7 III in the sense it still has this pro style body, it still has all the ergonomics and all the things that you want in a camera like this is actually the Sony a7 IV, which is actually the update to this camera. And if I'm being honest, there haven't really been a lot of cameras that have been as good as the a7 III, which is probably why it's still so popular. The a7 IV has a 33 megapixel sensor, but it still shoots at 10 frames per second, but it does do 4K video that is downsampled from 7K, and it also does 4K 60, although with a crop. But the newer Sony a7 IV also has newer Sony color science and updated pro style body, and it is a little bit chonkier. But if I'm being honest, I can see why the a7 III is so popular. 
There's not a lot of cameras that have come out that can really compete with this camera. And the a7 IV is only about $400 to $500 more than the a7 III. So if you have the cash to spend, definitely check that camera out. Overall, the a7 III is still an unbeatable deal considering the price, specs, and design of this camera. And the only camera that's really beating it is the update to the a7 III. So if you wanna check out this camera, make sure to check out the links in the description down below with also the best possible pricing for this camera and the a7 IV, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.